Around March of 2014, Ojoro Fumoto, or Mopin, would begin his Game a Week project, where he would simply experiment with different ideas. On the 13th project, he saw heavy potential and decided to continue further work on it. Fumoto didn't really have a core mechanic in mind, but he was passionate about games like Spelunky and wanted to make something that could run on a mobile device. In mid-October, Downwell would be released to Windows and iOS devices. Now, if you haven't played Downwell, I highly recommend you try it. The fast-paced, action-packed roguelike is incredibly fun and has tons of replayability. But why exactly is it fun? The core mechanic of the game, which are the gun boots, was something Fumoto didn't originally have planned from the start. In fact, the gun boots were just one of the many mechanics that Fumoto would try before ultimately settling on the downward shooting mechanic that we all know today. While his game didn't start with something inherently unique, through his development process, he was able to find something that works best for him. This is where a lot of games tend to fall flat. Trying to force your game into something will ultimately limit what you can produce, and what makes a game fun for you can be different from what makes a game fun for someone else. So how do developers design in a way that make it fun to play for everyone? In this video, let's look at how certain games approach the mechanic of making something fun, and how developers use subtle tricks to make players keep wanting more. The ability to allow players to choose what they can do next helps players feel more connected to the game because it allows their decisions to directly affect the gameplay. This doesn't have to be on a grand scale either, it can simply be branching paths. Let's analyze two games, Nuclear Throne and Stardew Valley respectively, to better understand the differences. In Nuclear Throne, your goal is to, well, reach the Nuclear Throne, but where the option of choice comes in is through its roguelike elements. After completing each level, you're presented with the option to upgrade your gun, health, damage, or other attributes related to your character and the game as a whole. Each selection of choices is also randomized for every new run you start, and once you lock these choices in, they are permanent to that run specifically. Nuclear Throne does two things right with its approach. It allows the player to make choices that affect their run until death, but it also keeps its playtime short, which in turn allows players to try a new approach during a different run. Stardew Valley grants you the ability of choice by granting the player the freedom to play the game however they feel. At its core, Stardew Valley is a farming game, but you can go through the entire game without farming at all and still have an enjoyable experience. The game gives you the ability to interact with the villagers, mine, explore, or even sell your soul to massive corporate entities. Truly, it is the ultimate gaming experience. What Stardew Valley does right is giving the player complete freedom. It never directly tells you that farming is the only thing that you can do, but instead allows the players to make their own decisions so that it fits their personal playstyle. Both of these games have the ability of choice, but how each of these games handle them is approached in very different ways, which can lead to their unique playstyles. This doesn't mean that games that follow a linear path are less than in any way, and making players follow a set path is ultimately better than giving players the illusion of choice, which many games fall victim to. Giving the player some kind of challenge adds to the general dynamic nature of video games. Of course, every game has some form of challenge, but how these challenges are constructed vary from game to game. Some games provide the player with a set challenge that they must overcome through constant replayability, while others allow players to create their own unique challenges through their experiences that they face during gameplay. Each of these will only target a certain audience, so it's important that games target their audiences correctly. If Animal Crossing suddenly turned into Dark Souls, it's safe to say that most players would immediately put down the game, and it's because the theme is inconsistent. The players who play Into the Gungeon are probably going to be different from the players who play Harvest Moon. Of course, the concept of challenge isn't something that can be split cleanly in the middle, but rather branch off into different accessibility options. This is why some games will allow the player to change the overall difficulty of the game, as it gives the player more control over how the game can be played. The final point in this video is player controls and game responsiveness. In any game, the player is going to want their input to directly affect the character on screen as quickly as possible, or they'll feel as if your game is slow, laggy, or unresponsive. Many online shooters, such as Valorant, take this into consideration when designing their game. Most online shooters use hitscan detection rather than actual bullet traveling because it makes the game feel more responsive. Although for this example, I want to analyze how Celeste handles its controls. Madeline has a variety of movements that involve running, jumping, dashing, and wall climbing, and each of these mechanics have tiny subsets that make them feel even better to play. What makes Celeste feel great to play is how each input is immediately detected. The controls never feel floaty, and you're able to pull off each movement in conjunction with another. While playing the game, I never found myself saying, why didn't they dash, or why is it so slow, but rather I was too slow, or my timing was off. With the player in control, you're able to ensure that each mistake is entirely on the player's actions rather than the game itself. So, 
What makes the game fun is a variety of different variables. The option of choice allows players to form their own story and explore unique playstyles. The form of a challenge encourages players to push themselves in a way that make them feel comfortable and the ability to responsively control the player and move dynamically allows the player to enjoy the full depth of a game. Everything in this video was to show that these ideas can be something developers actively think about during the production process or just come up with on the fly. And overall, what makes games fun is entirely unique to you. So if you'd like, please share in the comments below what makes a game fun for you personally to play. I'd love to see everyone's personal responses. Thank you for watching. I want to give a huge shout out to Vanessa and Hannibal for supporting me and the channel. Your continued support helps me create more videos for everyone to enjoy. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like and subscribe as it helps the channel a lot. And if you want to see a small game I made, you can click the video on your right. Thank you and I'll see you next time.